Hi guys, and um, thanks very much for, for joining us um, uh, at five o'clock this evening. So um, my own name is uh, David O'Leary. I'm, I'm the school manager of the School of Mathematical Sciences in UCC. Uh, and I'm joined by uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Kevin Hayes, who's the head of school, um, and uh, Dr. Andrea Saman, who is the, the chair of Mathematical Science uh, Committee. So listen, you're very welcome here uh, this evening. And as Ruth said, this is a, a very kind of brief information session just on on, on our on, 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 on the School of Maths and, and our on our programs. Uh, we have uh, maths is, as you know is, is everywhere in life. We have uh, nearly 5,000 students uh, that we teach to uh, across in the university uh, and in our program CK407 we have about uh, 60 odd students come in every year okay so um, so this is really just to give you an overview uh, and some and take, take some questions that you might have over the course uh, over the course of the after of the evening session, uh, so before I hand you over to Andrea Saman, who is the the course director, uh, I just want to bring in uh, uh, Dr. Kevin Hayes, who's the head of school. We'll just have a very br brief uh, brief words, uh, just welcome you this evening. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name is Kevin Hayes, and the head of school of uh, mathematical science here in UCC. Um, Mathematics in Cork goes back, uh, goes back a long way. In many ways, UCC is the cradle of mathematics in Ireland. You have heard about the legacy of George Boole. We have um, statues and, and libraries and everything um, named after him. But essentially, uh, you know, um, mathematics done over 150 years ago set the groundwork for the information age in which we live today. Um, I say that because you think of maths as an old subject, and it's certainly not. There was perhaps more mathematics created in the last century than all the other previous centuries put together. So it's a, it's a very, very uh, dynamic and um, developing subject. Um, when you think of maths, what do you think of and what do I think of and uh, what does Andreas think of? Well, it's, it, maths science covers uh, lots of different areas. There's applied maths, which is sort of... Um, modeling applied systems and using mathematical methods to essentially turn an awful lot of science areas into, in, 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 into um, mathematical models and descriptions. There's pure maths, which is basically how maths works, uh, which is um, important, for example, for high performance computing and logic and lots of other ways. There's statistics. The word statistics probably means literally translates a state as a state. So it's how we actually quantify information and marshal information and make, um, make decisions under, under uncertainty. So that comes in a lot of places. There's new areas such as data science and data science and analytics, which shows how maths can be partnered with uh, computer science. And then there's actuarial science. What does an actuary do? Well, apart from earning lots of money, they also sort of... Um, they, they work out your assurance and your insurance and, and um, es essentially evaluate uh, premiums uh, uh, based on evaluating risk. So, and, um, so, so they're the type of things that maths do. When you, the CAO form, is, it's a long time since I filled it out, but when I filled it out, which was many, many years ago, I almost said decades, well, um, you know, I, I really didn't know what does a mathematician work at. And to tell you the truth, you find mathematicians everywhere in different guises. If you are in a booming economy, um, you know, the, the, the job market is healthy and it's very good. To, um, a quantitative, um, a quantitative uh, qualification of any type um, will be fairly, uh, will, will be well sought and, and sought after. And it'll certainly be an employee's market. If you're in a depressed or a recession type of economy, people with quantitative um, degrees are certainly more in, in, in um, demand than, um, than, um, uh, than uh, uh, you'd think. So, you know, that they're, 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 you know, they're, they're never um, uh, short of, of, of a position or an opportunity. So, as I said, you find mathematicians everywhere. Um, so I, I don't know what type of questions we'll get. The, the, the person best, I suppose, in a best position to, to field and answer a lot of your questions regarding the, the course will be Andres, who um, I'll pass over to now. But, you know, um, 
as as Ruth said, there's there, there's 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 no such thing as a as a silly question. And when you're looking at the CAO form, it isn't as terrifying as you think. If you do something that you enjoy and something that you you know uh, really enjoy, that's really what what should really go first on your CAO form. And mathematics is an interesting subject, and it's an actual one of the things you can choose at university that you can. Uh, you can actually confidently say, I enjoy, or as some people say, I love. So uh, I'll leave it to Andreas now to describe about our course. And um, I hope that, you know, I hope that the next hour or so clarifies questions that you could have. Andreas. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Uh, and welcome, everybody. Um, so, um, yeah, so the purpose of this session is sort of to, um, Give you some idea what mass about in particular if you now would like to decide what to do and if you are maybe unsure at this point uh, what what you want to put up in the CAO uh, ranking uh, so so the purpose now is to try to um, clarify any remaining questions okay and if it can be done sort of in a less formal way I think it's helping everybody uh, to to get uh, there. So maybe I have a little presentation to share. Um, so I try to share my screen. I hope this works. And um, okay. Does this work? Yes, Andreas, yes, yeah. yeah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, so we're talking about uh, CK407 mathematical science uh, entry screen. And well, what is mathematics? So as Kevin already said, maths is everywhere. And we can sort of call it to be the language of science. Um, we sort of try to understand structures and patterns which either exist in reality or just even as abstract concepts. And um, there are three areas in math science at UCC. So as Kevin already mentioned, we have applied math, pure math, and statistics. And just to sort of say what each of them are, maybe let's even start with pure math. So that's probably what might be the closest to what you know already from uh, your secondary uh, education. So you would have things like algebra, analysis, calculus, or geometry in the pure maths area. And as you come to UCC, you would also study all those things um, in a bit more detail than what you would have done in the leaving cert. So these are the basic things which then provide the basis for further study either in pure maths itself or in applied maths, financial maths, statistics, but also physics and many other uh, scientific areas. Essentially maths is um, the basis for describing science. And let's say applied maths, typically it works like this. You have some real world situation or problem that you would like to understand. And understanding in that sense means you try to come up with some model, which hopefully describes some aspects at least of the real um, world problem that is under consideration. So you take this mathematical model, you solve it, and then you compare whether it actually does solve the problem that you had in mind. If it's not so, you try to add something to it. And it's a circle like this uh, demonstrated here. So you can go a couple of rounds, but that's sort of what applied math to some degree does, tries to explain reality to some degree. And then finally, statistics. That's uh, mostly about variability or randomness. So typically any types of real world situations would be not deterministic. There would be some randomness involved. Human behavior is random, uh, gambling, shares, and so on. All those, there would be random elements. Um, and in statistics, you would try to understand how to even in the face of randomness, make statements which uh, 
which can be uh, checked against reality. And um, now more specifically for the CK407 program structure. So if you decide to study it, you would have to do 60 credits in each year of your studies. And would it take a total of four years? All right, so it would be a four year degree. In the first year, um, you would have 40 credits, which are core, and then 20 credits, which you can choose, all right? And it's so that then after the first year, you decide which of the outlet streams you would like to pursue. So we have three things to add offer. So one is fi financial math and actuarial science, so FMS for short. Uh, that's one option. Maybe roughly, let's say, half of the students would typically take that one. Then we have mathematical science, uh, single owner's degree. That's maybe roughly maybe a quarter. And then math science and physics at the joint degree. That's another quarter, roughly. Okay, so this changes from year to year. So that's um, the outlet degrees. And maybe I should say already at this point, so there are 20 credits uh, electives in the first year, but the choice of electives is already fixed in the case if you would, for example, do math, science, and physics, you actually do not really have a choice. You need to take physics courses. Um, uh, otherwise, you could not do this last uh, math, science, and physics outlet degree. Okay. Um, other than this, you, you can choose. If you know already that you want to do financial math and actuarial science, there's also some preferred option. But um, in either case, uh, you have uh, options um, to choose from, but the majority of your um, courses would be fixed already. Okay. And um, what are the entry requirements? So you have the CAO points. Um, you need to have at least uh, H3 in maths. And beyond this, uh, there are no real entry requirements. What is helpful is you, if you did either applied math, physics, or accounting. But really, many of our students wouldn't have done neither of them. And do just fine, right? It does not harm, but on the other side, um, yeah, you can do without. And then finally, when you finish, what would you do afterwards, right? So um, our graduates are quite sought after and would have a variety of options to go into. So at the moment, quite a few people would go into data science, machine learning, this is a big area which is uh, growing and our graduates are well suited to go in this direction. Then there's research and finance, uh, consulting, right? Um, then also software development, engineering and so on. So you have quite a few things um, to go to, but it's maybe more specific if I actually show you um, uh, some outcomes of recent service that we did. So you can also find that on the UCC website. Um, so typically, essentially from none of our graduates would really be um, seeking employment for a long time. We have a good, very high employment rate. So after uh, our students finish, they are either going into employment or further study. So this is, for example, now the outlets uh, stream FMAS. Um, you see 2020, 90% would have been in employment and 10% would have gone to further study. And similar pictures would be for the other outlet stream streams as well. So this would be single owners. Essentially, everybody would be in employment and in Math science joint owners with physics would be um, quite a good portion would also actually go to further studies, okay? And actually, yeah, one person seeking employment now at this point in time, okay? Um, where do people end up at the end? So I just sort of copied up uh, a couple of uh, companies which take on our um, our graduates or took on our graduates 
um, who graduated in 2020. Okay, we don't have the new data for those who graduated just last year, but that's for the most recent data. And you maybe see a couple of um, companies that you recognize. Um, so that should maybe give you a feeling where uh, you might end up. Um, if you seek employment after the four years, uh, there's also the option to go and study further. Uh, so you can, you have the option to do a PhD or an MSc by research, or there are also a couple of taught master programs, either in UCC or beyond available to you or higher diplomas as appropriate. Okay. And that was already sort of the formal part. Um, so in, uh, in the preparation of this session, uh, you had already the option to send in some questions. And here I list the ones that we have received. Um, and we can go through them and we can try to answer them um, as we go, go along. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe I do first that and then ask you to um, ask questions um, yourself. So one question is um, regarding mature students. Um, um, how are the entry requirements? So if you're a mature student, you, uh, you compete for a separate uh, quota, which is separate from the standard leaving cert students. And um, you would, so there's a, um, uh, we, we essentially look at applications individually and you would need to um, have studied maths at the second, second level. And uh, you would need to make uh, uh, a case uh, that uh, you want to study maths and that we want essentially try to judge um, um, the likeliness of, of success to some degree. So maybe I, I can actually go to this link. I'm not sure if this works. If I probably see if I, yeah. Um, so so in, in essentially the, the formal um, uh, entry requirements would be available on the website. Maybe let me try once more. Does this work? Okay, so hopefully now um, here would be the entry requirements for mature student. So if you're math science, you must have studied maths at second level or QQI or FE and demonstrate maths um, involvement in maths related areas. Okay, so um, that's for mature students. Now let me maybe go back here. Um, there's no admission exam. Okay, so the question is, is there an admission exam or do you just look at decrease marks? So there's no admission exam. Um, another question, what is the most baffling and unsolvable thing in modern day maths problems? So that's a very subjective question. For me personally, it would be that it actually works. So in a way, what I mean is that, um, in maths, you might sort of try to figure something out without even knowing what it's useful for. For example, maybe a good example might be actually even George Poole, who was mentioned by Kevin before. Uh, so George Poole would have tried to figure out the laws of thought, so logic, without having any idea what it might be useful for uh, directly but it turned out to be the basis for computer science and um, um, was useful, okay. Um, is the course more practical and maths based or will there be some aspects of theory about maths and the history of mathematics? So we wouldn't have a module called history of mathematics but in most cases, the lecturers would introduce a subject with the history attached to it. Uh, it just makes sense to, to learn about the history as well. But um, in that sense, um, you, you would be learning something about the history. And you, um, so theory of, theory of maths, I'm not sure what is meant. So you definitely learn theory and you learn 
how to prove it's not uh, just practical maths in a it's not calculations or something like that if that's maybe the question here that wouldn't be the case right so it's we are formally uh, doing maths um, so that's maybe what I can say regarding this question so maybe let's see what other questions were there so another question would be uh, one what kind of work will be involved in the course are there many written papers or more exam based assessment so I should maybe say, so typically there would be a final exam from almost all modules, which carries most of the weight, okay? And it's actually just now the exam time also for university students. Uh, so in the current two weeks, uh, uh, students sit exams for the second semester, um, for the courses that they had in the second semester. Okay, so it will be exams, but there is also a continuous assessment component in, again, almost all, um, or I think all um, first year modules at least. And uh, that means you get feedback during the um, term or during the semester so that you know what to expect in the exam. So it's a mix of both continuous assessment and then the exam at the end. So another question, what does mathematics provide that other courses don't in terms of modules covered and topics? Okay, so um, I think most of the courses that are on off or modules that are on offer in maths are actually uh, quite unique to maths. That would, so in particular in pure maths and much of statistics, it would not be done you would not have access to those modules uh, in any other way rather than through studying um, maths um, or financial maths. And um, so um, it maybe depends on your interest. Um, I can enumerate a couple of topics, but uh, probably that would be, yeah. There is maybe overlap with physics and to some degree or with data science and analytics where we share a couple of modules which are not unique, okay? And what jobs comes, come out of financial mass and does it differ much from the course finance, okay? So in financial mass, um, uh, the difference probably between financial mass and finance is the maths content, uh, which is substantially higher in financial mass compared to finance. Um, in finance, you would be studying economics, accounting, those type of things. Um, maths, just uh, as it is needed uh, to um, obtain results rather than on its own. While um, in financial maths, you would uh, learn deeper maths. Um, that would be, I think, the main difference. And that's then also reflected probably to some degree in the jobs that are on offer. Also, for example, in financial mass, you have the option to do um, exemptions. So uh, actuarial exemptions for the actuarial profession. If you're interested in this, uh, that would be not uh, possible in, uh, in finance doing your degree. Um, is it difficult to do the course without having studied applied math uh, for leaving cert it's it's not really difficult and many people did it um, it's no harm if you um, do applied math but um, these topics that are needed in our degree will be repeated um, as required uh, similarly is secondary teaching covered over the course so um, i would say those things where we cannot know for sure that you would have had it, they all would be repeated. Okay, so um, we, we rely on um, the math syllabus to some degree that is covered in the, at school, but everything beyond it, we of course can't know whether you have done it or not. And um, for example, applied math or physics or even certain parts in, in the syllabus where we are not sure they are covered are repeated. But I should also say 
repeat it means it's it's probably quite fast typically teaching and learning in at university is much faster than at uni at uh, secondary school so it it will be repeated to some degree but quite quickly okay so maybe one more rough outline of timetables um maybe i can say something about this so uh you have 60 because you have 60 credits what one module would typically carry five credits which makes up 12 um, modules so you would have a timetable of 12 modules maybe i can go to here and where's that? No. I think I can show you maybe here a typical timetable. Um, I hope this works. So this would be all the core modules, which would be, uh, which you would need to take in the first year. So for example, you have something called introduction to mechanics or mathematical modeling and then mathematical software. This would be all applied maths um, topics. Then abstract algebra, linear algebra, calculus, analysis. This would be pure maths um, topics. And similarly, uh, introduction to probability and statistics, that's obviously statistics. So those are the things that you need to take um, in your first um, year. Each of them would ca carry five credits. And then in addition, you would have electives. And um, this could be, for example, uh, even biology or computer science, chemistry, physics, um, and so on. Okay, uh, so that would be um, making up your your calendar. Each of those modules uh, typically has two hours of lectures per week. Okay, and then another hour of tutorial. That's how most what the typical lecture would be organized in that way. So you can count maybe three hours lecture and tutorial time where you should attend um, the campus um, and uh, for each of those um, listed modules. So that means if you have six modules per semester, that's times three. So let's say 18 hours per week uh, where you would need to be uh, present on campus and then um, this is quite intense material, so we need about the same amount of time again to actually revise and understand. Okay, so this is about the, the let's say uh, roughly what what in, is entailed um, in studying it. Okay, so go back here. Um, what can I expect in the first year? So that is um, what I meant. Um, so um, this type of uh, workload um, would be um, on offer. And how do I decide what electives to choose in the first year? So we will give you information about what are the consequences of choosing um, which electives uh, in some introductory uh, sessions. Um, but I can say already, uh, so. It depends mostly on your desired outlet streams. So if you want to do joint uh, maths and physics um, degree, you need to take physics. Okay, so there's no other way. So that is already, there's no choice anymore regarding electives. Um, if you don't want to take joint honors with physics, but you're not sure whether you take single honors maths or financial maths, then there is nothing obligatory. But if you know already for sure that it's financial maths, then there would be two electives again, which we would strongly recommend so that you um, have a head start regarding the exemptions, if that is something that you desire. Okay. Um, and that's similarly maybe to the next question, what are the differences uh, between the streams? So we have those three streams. All right, so maybe I can bring them up somewhere again. There they are. 
so financial maths and actuarial sciences. So you only decide after your first year which stream you follow. Financial maths, um, you study uh, financial mathematics. You have the options to obtain exemption for uh, for act, um, for actuaries, um, and uh, this would sort of prepare you for a career in the broader finance actuary um, area. But again, it's um, up to you what you decide where to go to. Then you have math science uh, on its own without physics, so we call it single honors degree, that uh, prepares you to either do research in maths or to um, pursue one of the careers um, um, that were mentioned before. So again, many people might go to data analytics, finance, um, banking, uh, software, this type of stuff. And then math, science, and physics, Maybe over the years, that's um, the degree where quite a few people would go on and continue to do research um, after math, science, and physics in the area um, which bridges those two uh, subjects, so math and physics. Um, and maybe I should also say this, de this degree, math, science, and physics, you can essentially also enter through another stream, CK408 physics. Okay. So um, Either way, you end up with the same degree at the end, whether you do CK407 or CK408 and choose this math, science, and physics degree. This is about 50 50 physics and math. And you would be well prepared to then continue to do a PhD in either physics or maths or even a related area that, um, that is um, quite common here. Now, I'm going to think go to the end once more. Um, and what are the main career paths in the joint mass physics route? Yeah, so main career paths, um, according to this, here might be actually, in this case, in this year, it was probably further study. Uh, so um, actually, I quite a few of my own PhD students would have done maths and physics. So doing a PhD after maths and physics is quite common, but also then employment uh, directly after degree uh, would be a career path or a master as well. So some people first do a master or master by research and then continue with a PhD uh, in this degree. Okay. And where to graduate? Yeah, what are further study options? Where do graduates go? I think that that I think I have explained. Um, but if there are more specific questions, please let me know. So I think that that is essentially what I have from my side. Maybe.